there has been a lot of, of wishful thinking um, of, of uh, claiming that, um, that there were solutions in process, whereas uh, really um, the policymakers at European summits, for example, were only scratching the surface and in some cases uh, really um, being counterproductive. So I think at the European level there needed to be a much more uh, radical acceptance of the depth of the problem that Europe faced, in particular of the Greek debt problem, of the need to, res to erect a serious firewall around um, other countries in the Eurozone, in particular Spain and Italy. Um, so it was a, a matter of depth of trouble and, and, and scale of response that was uh, always inadequate, always running behind reality. And then at the national level I think there was um, frankly a reluctance to admit to uh, the scale of the problem and to, to take remedial measures quickly enough and Spain is a very good example of that. I think Spain was in effect in denial for a long time. There is a, a real problem there that uh, essentially the European policy now being enshrined in, in, in a treaty um, is to have almost a coordinated uh, austerity at the European level just at the time when um, growth is one of the main uh, problems confronting uh, the euro area. So uh, I think there is a, a, a fundamental um, misdiagnosis of the problem that, is, that risks being enshrined in, in policy uh, by law uh, and therefore aggravating things rather than making them better. So I think the, the, the backlash against this um, coordinated austerity is, is, a very, is a very reasonable one. Uh, and sure, some countries have to take drastic measures to get their budgets in order and to, to start bringing them down. Uh, but by the same token, other countries, those that have more leeway, need to um, do more to, 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 to boost demand and to uh, to help um, pull the Eurozone and indeed the world economy out of its troubles. One level I think that you do see that um, uh, companies are particularly focused on uh, the bottom line in a time of difficulty and, and the, the, the frothier end of what you might call corporate so social, woolly corporate social responsibility uh, has sort of gone out of the window a bit. The sort of uh, the, the, the showcase, the, the facade of this, um, this area has um, no longer washes and, and, and there, there's much less budget for it. It's a much more hard-headed look at uh, what really is in the corporate interest. So from that point of view, you may say that the agenda is, if anything, um, getting less um, socially responsible. But I think if you look more deeply and you see um, what many companies are actually doing who are thinking more fundamentally about uh, issues such as uh, climate change, uh, is issues such as uh, the long-term um, availability of, of, of the sort of labour that, uh, that they need and so on, uh, then you see companies doing quite a lot working in innovative ways with non-governmental organisations, um, mindful of uh, their reputation when it comes to uh, paying very large rewards for their own um, executives and so on. Um, so I, I think it, it, the, 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 there's a sort of twin track here of um, perhaps less superficial stuff going on and rather more fundamental stuff going on in the sustainability area. Well Scott, the Scottish issue first, f first of all I think is, um, is really important not just for for the United Kingdom and it's interesting uh, uh, I always uh, tell uh, people when this crops up in, in uh, conversations back in, in Britain that this is an issue that would have reverberations far beyond, uh, far beyond Scotland, far beyond yeah. England, especially in Spain and uh, this is something that of course is not normally typically taken into account, considered uh, in Britain where there's an insular view of, of, of this whole issue.